بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبع. Okay, inshallah, we're going to move forward with the with the forty hadith, and we're in the second hadith. But we're on the, we're going to begin the second hadith. Now, who can tell me, or who remembers without looking at your notes, the first hadith? Huh? Okay. The first hadith. Who knows the first hadith? Tell me something about the first hadith from the forty hadith. Huh? Okay, alhamdulillah, barakallahu fi. Who wrote the book? The 40 hadith of who? Struggling a little bit, huh? And Nawawi, and Nawawi, Imam and Nawawi. A N apostrophe. You, what I call Inglebeck. Amen and not what we. You may find it spelled differently, but this is uh, more like phonetically correct. Now what we. And now what we. Huh? What was the first time? Amen. Amen. And now what we. He's the author of the 40 Hadith. The 40 Hadith of the Nawawi. Yeah, he, he wrote this particular treatise. Or this, uh, he compiled these particular Hadith. And there are actually more than 40 Hadith. And this is something that was common amongst the scholars who wrote in the field of Hadith. That they would bring 40 Hadith and you know collect the book and with 40 Hadith. And we, we talked about this in the first class. You can go back and look at it. So now we're in the second hadith. And I would encourage everyone to get a copy of this book. And this is the book in English. This is the book in English. And this is an explanation by Sheikh Al-Fawzan, Hafidhahullah Ta'ala. And you'll find the book, you know, explained by different scholars over the years. And you can also get the metan, 40 hadith, and we'll explain it as we go. So we finished the first hadith, as she said, Barakallahu fiha, innama la'amalu bin niyat. Innama la'amalu bin niyat. And verily the actions are but by the intent. And this is the first hadith. The actions are by the intent. So as we move to the second hadith, عن عمر بن الخطاب رب الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه قال بيننا نحن جلوس عند رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذات يوم إذ طلع علينا رجل شديد بياض الطياب شديد السواد الشعر لا يرى عليه أثر السفر ولا يعرفه منا أحد حتى جلس إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأسنل ركبتيه إلى ركبتيه ووضع كفيه على فخذيه وقال يا محمد أخبرني عن الإسلام فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الإسلام أن تشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمدا رسول الله وتقيم الصلاة وتؤتي الزكاة وتصوم رمضان وتحج البيت إن استطعت إليه سبيلا قال صدقت قال صدقنا فعجبنا له يسأله ويصدقه قال فأخبرني عن الإيمان قال أن تؤمن بالله 
wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusuli wal yawmil akhir wa tu'mana bil qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi qala sadaqt qala fa akhbirni an al ihsan qala an ta'budu Allah ka annaka tarahu fa in lam takun tarahu fa innahu yara qala fa akhbirni an al sa'a qala mal mas'ul anha bi a'lam min al sa'il qala fa akhbirni an amaratiha qala an talid al ummata an talid al ummatu rabbataha wa an tara al huffat aw an tara al huffat al urat al alata wi'a al sha'i yatatawalun fi al bunyani qala ثم انطلق فلبثت مليا ثم قال ثم قال لي يا عمر اتدري من السائل قلت الله ورسوله اعلم قال فانه جبريل اتاكم يعلمكم دينكم وراه مسلم so this hadith is the famous hadith and is known as the hadith of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam this is the hadith of Jibreel and Jibreel is the angel Gabriel for those of us who don't know this is the hadith of the angel Gabriel and the hadith is surrounding a situation that occurred an incident that occurred when the companions of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam was with him as they normally are right someone came to him Let me just translate the hadith and we can, you know, try to explain it a little bit as we go. So, Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, al-Khattab, he is the one who narrated this hadith. So, the hadith was narrated by Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Umar was who? You know who Umar was? Who knows uh, who Umar was? Raise your hand if you know who Umar is. Isa. Huh? So, he was a companion? Anything else? Okay. Huh? Okay. Sister said and the brother said, well the brother said he was Al-Faruq. Sister said he was the second Khalifa of the Muslims. The Khalifa is a successor a successor the second one to come and take the position of the leadership of the muslim ummah after the death of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he was the second leader of the muslims after the death of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was known as farooq huh why did he have this name ah uh, he was able to discern between truth and falsehood الذي يفرق بين الحق والباطل the one who could you know make the difference who did, can can distinguish the difference between truth and falsehood and these were some special qualities and special characteristics that were found inside of the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he chose these men to aid his prophet to accompany his prophet alayhi salatu wasalam in bringing us the religion preserving the religion for us right Now. So Umar said he said one day we were sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam right and then a man appeared a man appeared right a man came upon us huh his clothing were exceedingly white and his hair was exceedingly black his clothes were so white like these brothers mashallah tabarakallah and his hair was exceedingly black he had extremely white clothing and extremely black hair why is this important we'll get to that la yara alayhi athru safar and there was no trace of travel upon him no trace of travel right now this is going to be a, a 
it's going to be so many benefits that, that are going to be extracted from this hadith. We're going to be able to extract so many different benefits and lessons from this hadith, right? In this particular instance, why was this mentioned? Why was it important? Because they didn't know him. He popped up in the middle of the desert. Remember, they were in the desert. There was no dry cleaners, <laughs> right? He popped up in the middle of the desert. No one knew him. He just appeared. His clothes were exceedingly white and his hair was exceedingly black. What does that mean? Huh? No signs of travel. And what that means more specifically is that there was no dirt on him. No dust in his hair. You travel in the desert, you're going to get some dust in your hair. You're going to have some dust on your clothes sitting down. His hair was exceedingly black and his clothes were exceedingly white. But we didn't see any sign of, any sign of travel on him. So this was strange. Now, and none of us knew him. None of us knew him. 